Behind the Scene. Okay, that's our new series. We ended our series called Enact, and that was like a long series, six weeks. But it's a good opportunity for us to get to know who we are and what to do, uh, to get to know this church, the mission God has given us and the sense of identity He has given us. And so we're done with that. Now we have a new series called Behind the Scene. Now to all the English technocrats, we really intentionally spell the scene as S-E-E-N. Okay, so don't approach Pastor Carlos or me after the service that it's wrong spelling. No, it's a play on words. You know, when you talk about behind the scene, that phrase reminds you of movies, right? Because when you hear the word behind the scene, but when we watch movies, the only things you see are actually the things you see on screen. The actors, the surrounding, the special effects. But little do we know that whenever we watch a movie, there are a lot of things at play or working behind the scene that the eyes do not see, right? And you only find that out after the movie when you see the credits. There are a lot of people and there are a lot of things involved in making a movie. The viewers are only focused on the actors and the actress and the surrounding things, the only things we see on screen, but little do we know that there are a lot of things at play. There's someone that's influencing that, how the actor should act how the actress should act, how should it play the next scene. There's someone that's influencing that all, everything from the start to the end. That's behind the scene. You know, when you look at the Bible, when you look at Genesis, creation, and every miracle story in the Bible, even Jesus doing God's work, and when the church, and the church doing and performing miracles, sometimes a reader, when he reads the Scripture, He's focused on the people that God used. They're focused on the miracle. But little do we know that there's someone that's influencing it. There's someone that's behind every miracle story from creation to every God's work, an amazing and powerful story from Genesis to Revelation. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next four weeks. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit was behind in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if you look at, if I'm not missing, in verse 2 or verse 3, you would see the Holy Spirit already influencing and contributing and helping out in the creation of the world. And every story, just to give a random example, Samson, how he found his strength, it was from the Holy Spirit. The people that God used to design the temple, it was influenced by the Holy Spirit. So pag mahikita mo in the scripture, the Holy Spirit is involved. But we can say he was behind the scene. He's not actually mentioned every time when, the, when there's a great miracle that takes place in the scripture. But you would see the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, is part of God's work from Genesis to Revelation. Even Jesus, before he did miracles and a lot of miracles and ministered to people, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When he left the responsibility to the church of planting churches in different nations and going and make disciples of all nations, the Holy Spirit was behind that. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next four weeks. Who is the Holy Spirit? It reminds you of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, here in this church, we believe that there are three persons in one God. We believe that God the Father, God the Son, they are three in one essence, God. And I want us just to establish that foundation tonight as we talk about it for the next three Sundays. Who is the Holy Spirit? And why do we need to talk about the Holy Spirit? Why do we need to understand His role in our lives? And why do we need to depend on Him each and every day? You know why? This is the premise. Because every work of God requires supernatural power. Every work of God requires supernatural power. My point is this. When there are things that God is asking you to do this coming week, you cannot do it apart from His power. Amen. Give you an example. How can you convince an atheist to believe in Jesus and to put his or her faith in Jesus? How can you convince him? How can that happen? How can an atheist have a change of heart and be convinced that there is really a God and I will walk with Jesus starting today? How can, how can that happen? How can that become a reality? Well, no, let me tell you, knowledge and eloquence will not suffice. It would take the Spirit's work to touch the heart of that atheist. 
And for that person to surrender his or her life to Jesus. Look at the person beside you. Uh-uh, tingnan mo. Magbabago yan in Tagalog. That person can change only with the help of the Holy Spirit. Helping someone who is uh, struggling, who wants to be discipled but struggling with addictions. How can that person be freed and, and overcome addictions? By your words? Your love is not enough. You bringing him to church is not enough. It would take the Holy Spirit to touch that person, to flow in and through you and touch that person. When you speak the word of God, it changes that person. It turns around that person. That's the Holy Spirit's job. When, you, when, you, when, you, when we plant churches, and we talked about the NAC, when we plant churches in restricted and closed nations, how could that be possible? Having enough money will not suffice. Having enough money will not suffice. It's the Holy Spirit that can open nations, that can open someone who's stubborn and who's far away from God and can draw him, convict him, and start to put his or her faith in Jesus. You know, when Pastor Paolo, I'm just giving you different examples that the importance of the power of the Holy Spirit, when Pastor Paolo preaches here every Sunday night, and when you bring someone along, maybe he or she is... is it's her first time here. It's not Pastor Paulo's charis- charisma. It's not the lights or the air condition that can save the person. How many of you believe it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict that person? Amen. We can expect and encounter changed lives every time the Holy Spirit's power is flowing in and through the church and into that person's life. Every work of God requires supernatural power. When you have a burden... Sino dito may burden of reaching out to your office mates, to your business partners, to your classmates, to the people you know. When there are, God is giving a burden to reach out to them. It's not just your words and your good looks that can save a person. Although, thank God for good looks, right? <laughs> but that will not suffice. It's the Spirit of God. That's why we believe. And we have worship night and we have Thursday night prayer meetings uh, every month. And we pray for that because we're depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8, it says, you will receive. Jesus was talking to his disciples uh, here in this story. Jesus was about to ascend to heaven. And uh, he's leaving the responsibility of changing the world to his disciples. And so the disciples seeing Jesus alive again, Resurrected from the dead after three days. Of course, kung ikaw si Peter or yung disciples ni Jesus, excited ka. Boy to. Boy, I'm ready to preach the word. I'm ready to share the gospel to people. We're ready to change the word. So excitement is there. The zeal is there. But Jesus said, in short, you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What Jesus was actually saying, do not minister first. Excitement is not enough. That excitement can wane down. But I want you, you cannot minister. In short, what Jesus is saying, you cannot minister and you cannot share the gospel. You cannot change the world if it's based on human strength. Wait. That's what he was saying. Wait because I will send the Holy Spirit to you and when you receive it, there's power. Alam niyo yung word na power dito, mga kapatid? When you look at the power, in Greek, it's dunamis. You know what dunamis is? It's the root word of dynamite. Alam niyo ba yung dynamite? Sa pag nanod kayong cartoons, di ba may TNT? Yung... yung kailangan ko pa i-describe sa inyo, eh, no? Di ba that explosion, that powerful explosion, that's what it's referring to. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, There's power. I don't know, do I, what do I mean? Do you have to shout? Do you have to yell whenever you share the word? No, it's not. It's a power that can change one's heart. The power that can change an impossible situation. That's what you mean when in the power and to, to make things happen beyond your comprehension and your imagination. That's the power that the Holy Spirit is offering to us. That's why it's different. When you talk about 
Christianity, it's not about eloquence, just like what Apostle Paul said. It's not about eloquence. It's not about charisma. It's not about a certain person, but it's the power of the Spirit moving in, in and through us. Every work of God requires supernatural strength. That's why we need to depend on the Holy Spirit each and every day. When we're doing God's work, we need, parang dota, you need God's strength. So what's the role of the Holy Spirit? That's what we're going to study tonight. The role of the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 1 to 10. This is one of the miracle stories of uh, Peter and John. Now Jesus already, they already received the Spirit here. They already received the power of the Spirit. And this is one of the, their first. This is one of their first miracles, if I can say that. Uh, there's, it's a healing story that when they were on the way to the temple, they were able to minister to a lame person. Let's look at that. And as we look at this, it's interesting. There's no such Holy Spirit mentioned in this text. But we're going to discover that He was behind everything. Kaya nga behind the scenes eh. Now, it's only focused in this text. It only magnifies the person of Peter and John. So, tatlo na yung characters dito. Peter, John, and the lame person. But we're, now we know that the Holy Spirit is behind it. We're going to see his role here. In verse 1, let's look at the story. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. When you say the ninth hour, it's actually 3 p.m. So, meron pa lang 3 o'clock habit nun. No? Okay, 3 o'clock p.m., Peter and John, was about, they were about to pray. And I were actually going to the temple. In verse 2, And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of the, those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive, Nalilimos. Okay? And in verse 4, And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us with authority and with boldness. In verse 5, and he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. And this is what Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. There's an exclamation point there. There's such authority that came from Peter's words. There's authority. There's an exclamation point. Sino dito nakaka-relate? I have no money. That's what Peter said. No money, pero may Jesus ako. Nakasama if you can relate. But you came here, no money. And sometimes I talk to people and I ask, no, just approve. every time I get to meet the first timer, oh, just uh, anything you need, huh? except money. <laughs> but Jesus, I can give it to you. Diba? And that's what the, the case of Peter. He had, he was full of the Spirit. He wasn't rich. He was full of faith, but he has something to offer to that person. If received, it can change a person's life. What's the Holy Spirit's role here? Remember, Peter was actually in the temple. Who crucified Jesus? It's actually the Jews, the Pharisees, and the religious leaders, right? To them, to some, Jesus is actually blasphemy or blasphemous. When you mention it, it's blasphemous. It's offensive to people. But you would see the courage and the boldness of Peter. After receiving the Holy Spirit, he didn't really care how many people are there, how many religious and anti-Jesus people are there. Because he knew he saw something in the man. He wanted to help the man. He proclaimed Jesus boldly. In the name of Jesus. And there's an exclamation point. So wala pang mic nun. There's no mic and there's no... AV system or sound system before. So when you, there's an exclamation point. There's such authority and such boldness and confidence that came out from Peter's words. In the name of Jesus, walk. He did not care whether a lot of Jews in that temple, religious Jews, heard the name Jesus. He did not care. But he had such boldness. And you know, you would see the role of the Holy Spirit here because he received the Spirit a few chapters before here. You would see that the Holy Spirit gave Peter the boldness to proclaim Him or to proclaim the name of Jesus. That's the, one of the roles of the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit as a Christian, it gives you the boldness to stand up for Him. Stand up for Jesus. My question to us is this. When was the last time you shared Jesus boldly to your office mates? 
It's a good question. When was the last time you shared Jesus to your business partners, to your clients, to your co-workers boldly? You ever had that conversation? Hot seat ka? How many of you have that conversation already or a situation? You were in a hot seat. You were probably your office mates and you, you were having lunch. Let's say in a girl's perspective, Mare, sister, I kind of noticed you no longer drink with us. You no longer say bad words. You no longer entertain green jokes. What's changed? What's up with you? So let's say 10 people are there on the table. They were asking you, Diba, you're hot seat guy. They noticed the change and they asked you, What's something new? Ano pa? Ano pa nagbago sa'yo? Kailangan ba ng tulong? Diba? Are you okay mentally? Ano ba? What's wrong? May kulto ka bang sinalihan? Diba? Yung mga ganong tanong? Those kinds of questions. Diba? What's wrong? I mean, tapos pag tinanong nila, Christian ka na ba? Born again? Are you born again Christian? Tugtug, tugtug, tugtug. <laughs> diba? Nervous ka na eh. <laughs> Hindi mo alam. You're, there's no... The boldness, you don't know, diba? Oh my gosh, Lord. Why am I being persecuted? Wow! <laughs> wow, persecution! Kawawa ka naman! Diba? Why are you going through, why are you allowing me to go through this trial? Dug, 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 dug. What will you say? Let's not talk about it, sis. All religions lead no. Oh, naku po. Diba? Are you a Christian? When someone asks you, you're in a hot seat. Are you a Christian? Semi, <laughs> on the way. <laughs> Those situations where you're forced to proclaim Jesus boldly. When was the last time you shared Jesus boldly? It's a good question. When was the last time you stood up for your convictions? Stand up for what is right. There's already there. Pakisama na lang, Pastor. Pakisama, nakakaya naman eh. Secret agent Christian. James Bond. Anyway, God looks at the heart. But that's a good thing. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, there's boldness. How many fear you want to be bold in proclaiming your faith to people? Now, I'm not talking about foolishness, right? Now, when you walk along market, market, Repent! But I'm, not, I'm not talking about that, right? You talk to all the customers, repent, you'll go to hell, every one of you. I'm not, you can do that. I'm not talking about that. But when was the last time you shared your testimonies boldly? But, but it's the Holy Spirit's job. Remember Peter's background? Of course, Peter is actually zealous, right? Sometimes uh, impulsive. That's the background of Peter. But remember Peter, at the point where there was already a uh, pressure cooker, yun yung tawag natin, the pressure cooker situation where he was asked, are you a follower of Jesus, right? I mean, he, when, he actually chickened out. Well, that's a good question. When was, last, when was the last time we chickened out? We denied Jesus. Because that's the background of Peter. He denied Jesus three times. But you know, that, that's the good thing after the resurrection and received the Holy Spirit. When he received the Holy Spirit, you know what happened to Peter? From a person who denied Jesus, he proclaimed Jesus to 3,000. Wow, that's a good turnaround. Some of you I sense now, I, this is not part of my notes, some of you I sense, you've chickened out a lot of times. You ran away from that conversation a lot of times. But I'm telling you tonight, as you receive the Holy Spirit, there's going to be fresh boldness. There's going to be fresh boldness and confidence. You're not going to be intimidate, intimidated. Whether you're talking to the richest person out there or to the poorest person, there's confidence and boldness that will come. Flow with the Holy Spirit flowing in and through you and you'll be able to proclaim Jesus in a bold way. You can turn that around. But it takes supernatural power. Let's continue on in verse uh, 7. And so that's what Peter proclaimed. Actually, John was just standing. It was actually Peter. He proclaimed the name of Jesus to that person who was slain. What happened? He took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. He was healed. The lame person from 
who was lame from birth, got healed. You know the second thing the Holy Spirit does? He's behind the scenes. He doesn't just give boldness to us when we proclaim Jesus, but the second one is He empowers us to do the impossible. How impossible the situation of the lame person? Well, very impossible. Well, uh, you would see in the next chapter, the lame person was actually 40 years already lame. So, nasa, tumatambay lang sa temple yan. Hopeless. The lame person situation and his physical condition, condition we can say he's, he's un unhealed for 40 years. It's been a long time. Now, if I've been suffering for 40 years, I could have given up. You could have given up. Baka some of you, 10 years lang, gumibab ka na eh. Kunin mo na ako, Lord. Get me na. There's no more purpose here. Ba? You could have given up. 40 years, the man was unhealed. Not only that, the man's situation was unchanged. He would consistently, every day, ask money. Money na lang. As if it can really change you. That was actually the wrong perspective when the lame person uh, uh, just thinking that money will help. Was unchanged. The man's spiritual condition, he doesn't know Jesus. He's unsafe. So damning un. Unhealed. Situation is unchanged. His spiritual condition is far from God, unsafe. How many of you here you know a lot of people like that? Family reconciliation, it seems it's impossible. Healing, I think it's impossible. We've already we've already seen different situations that sometimes it seems impossible. But the good thing about it. When Peter uttered those words in the name of Jesus, with the authority that comes from Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit flowing in and through him, there was actually breakthrough. You know how can breakthrough happen in our lives? How can breakthrough happen in our lives? Whatever situation you're going through tonight, my brother and my sister, how can breakthrough happen? With the Spirit of God. Not by power, not by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do the impossible. What are the things that God is asking you to do? Maybe this week or in the season of your life. But sometimes it's difficult. Parang sinabi mo, Lord, send him, not me. Diba? Parang sinabi niya, say, Lord, here I am, send me. But you can't say that. No, send the person beside me. He can do it better. You know, sometimes we run away from the responsibilities and the calling of God because it seems impossible. But that's what the Holy Spirit does to each one of us. He empowers us to do the impossible. In this case, it's actually healing. Verse 8. And leaping up, of course, the lame person got healed. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and enter the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. See the result? When the person got healed, he knew God. That's a good thing about the miracle stories. That's why you call it signs and wonders. What does, sign, what does a sign do? What does a sign do? It points you to something, right? It's a guide. It points you to your destination. When you're I don't know if we have a lot of signs here in Manila. But let's say if you're in BGC, right? There are different signs to point you to a certain direction. That's what signs do. So when you say when you say signs and wonders or miracles, it's actually it points you to someone. The miracles are not, uh, not actually the end itself. It's scary if miracles are actually the end itself. At the end of the day, the disciples are glorified. But the purpose of signs and wonders and miracles is that it should point them to God. A lot of people experience miracles of God. But in the end, they're not part of the church. They don't have a relationship with God. Sayang. Miracles, the motive why miracles happen to different people is the preferred idea is that it points them to God and they start surrendering their lives to Jesus and starts walking with them. Or with him, rather. That's what you call signs and wonders. And wonders should be answered. But when you wonder, 
or you have a question, or you're curious, it should be answered, right? And through signs and wonders, signs and wonders should lead people to Jesus. That's what happened to the lame person. Ganda nung sinabi ni Peter, wala pera, but I have Jesus. You can have Jesus, it can turn your life around. Verse 9, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. It became a testimony to a lot of people in verse 10 and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. The Holy Spirit's role is not just to give us boldness to proclaim Jesus to people who don't know him. The Holy Spirit's role is not just to empower us to do the impossible so that healing and miracle impossible things can happen through us. It's not just that. But one of the signs also, important sign, is the Holy Spirit's work should result in the praise and honor of God. At the end of the day, it wasn't actually Peter and John that were glorified. At the end of the day, what did it say? God was praised. And that's the Holy Spirit's work. It should result in the praise and the honor of God, not on a certain pastor, not on a certain minister, not on a certain victory group leader or a Christian. You know what you will really see the genuine work of the Holy Spirit? At the end of the day, if people start to glorify and honor God. My prayer for us, let your lives be an inspiration. Look at the person beside you again. I know it's awkward already. <laughs> Look at the person beside you. Let that person's life be an inspiration, not for them to be glorified and honored by other people, but how many of you believe our lives will glorify and honor Jesus? That's the goal. That's what we want. That's the Holy Spirit's work. Whether you're a pastor or a regular businessman, it doesn't matter. As long as we're walking with Jesus, let us depend on the power of the Holy Spirit Impossible things can take place on, your, on our behalf if we step out in faith and start obeying Him and we depend not on our own strength but on the strength of the Holy Spirit. Anything, I'm going to believe anything is possible. Amen. I believe each one of us can be used by God. How many of you believe that? You can be used by God. You don't have to be a pastor to be used by God. I know there are a lot of things that God is asking you to do this week. Some of you have challenges. Some of you, you've been praying for someone. Some of you, you need now, you need to, you've been a Christian for a long time. You need to minister to someone. You've been sitting on the same seat, parang bench warmer ka na lang dyan, and God has been waking you up and telling you, I'm going to use you, but you're afraid. We're afraid. I'm afraid too at times. I get nervous every time I preach. Kinakapalang ko na lang mukha ko minsan but I rely on the Spirit of God. There are a lot of things that God is asking us to do and makes us afraid. But I think it's time we be filled by the Holy Spirit before we leave. And how many of you believe this coming week, everything will change because we're no longer working on our own human strength. We're working and operating in the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. We're going to believe God for great things. We're going to believe God for miracles. We're going to believe God when you pray for people who are sick. They will be healed. We're going to believe God when you pray. There's going to be breakthrough that will happen. In fact, I want us to pray. Lord Jesus, fill us up. Some of us are tired here. Fill us up. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. I sense a lot of people are, a lot of you, I just sense a lot of you are afraid. Lord, you said, you did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, spirit of love, and of sound mind. Lord, let that fear vanish in the mighty name of Jesus. We've denied you a lot of times. We've been shy and ashamed of sharing the gospel to people. In the name of Jesus, we ask for boldness even right now, Lord. Some of us, we've been hesitant, thinking, am I qualified to be used by you, Lord? We have that questions, Lord. I pray you will remove every doubt in our hearts, Lord. So fill us up, God. Can we just lift our hands? Lord, fill us up. We're not going to operate on our strength. We're not going to operate based on our instinct. 
based on our experiences. We're relying on your power, Holy Spirit. Just on your own words right now, Lord, ask for the Holy Spirit. On your own words right now, strengthen me as I face this week. Jesus, let's pray that prayer. Lord, I want to receive from you tonight. The Holy Spirit flow in and through me. Thank you, Pastor Patrick. Powerful word. I have, I'd like to pray for two groups of people right now. First of all, there are some of us here who've been, maybe you've been coming for a while, or maybe this could be the very first time you've come to an event like this, to a church service quite like this. I want to give you an opportunity like Pastor Dan did to those people who are listening to him. Maybe just like them, you believe in God but you've never actually placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord. You know, I'm holding in my hand right now on a phone. Every single one of you in this room probably has one just like this. But you see, if there's no power in this phone, it's just a paperweight, a really expensive paperweight. What you need to do is turn it on. It has to have power. When and once it's on, then all of these apps, all of these opportunities, all of this technology is now available to you in your hand. You see, you could be here today and you could be trying to live a good life. You could be trying to please God. But the Bible says, unless you are born again, unless the revelation of what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross, unless you have come to faith in Christ alone, it's like a dead paperweight. But in Christ, if you come to faith in Christ, God turns something on inside of you. You are born again. I believe there's some of you here, before I even pray for the Holy Spirit to come in power in your life, I believe some of you need to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you just take a moment and bow your heads here? If you're here and you say, I fear God, but I know I do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you sense God turning something on in your soul, He's saying, I want you to follow me and live for me. If you're here, could you take a moment, lift up your hands, and I'm, I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer. That's you, all right. I see your hand. I see your hand. All right. If you're praying this prayer, just lift up your hand with me, and this is just between you and God right now, but pray this prayer with me. You say, Lord Jesus, I recognize I know about you but I do not have a personal relationship with you the Bible says you love me so much you died on the cross to pay for my sins so that I could have eternal life with you today I lift up my hand and I say, I believe in what you have done for me on the cross. I'm sorry for my life of sin apart from you. And I receive the gift of eternal life. Today, I declare the old is gone. Today, I declare new life has come in me in jesus name we pray amen amen and give god a big hand if you pray that prayer today everything in you is absolutely new and if that's you and you pray that prayer, you know, please talk to us here in front. Our campus missionaries, our pastors, our small group leaders are here. We'd love to talk to you about the decision you just made. But for everybody else here and you come to faith in Christ and you've already received Him, you know that He is Lord over your life, there is a promise that He has said in Scripture. How do you know this verse? It says in Luke chapter 11, verse 9, it says, I tell you, ask it and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. How many know this verse? A really popular verse about prayer, right? 
But let, let me, could you humor me for a bit and let's continue reading the passage because the passage isn't done. Jesus is not yet finished teaching here. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everybody who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. You see, he now explains this. What father among you, how many fathers do we have in the house here? You know, if your child, if your son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? He see, he's saying here, if you who are normal dads ask for some, your children ask you for something, won't you try to do and give what they ask? And he says here, verse 13, if you then, you who are evil, those of us here understand oh, those, the sin in our lives and the reality that we serve a holy God. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. You see the verse, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and that door will be open to you, is in reference to asking God for the power of the Holy Spirit to come and manifest in your life so that your day-to-day -day life, every single day, it's not just the power encounters that Pastor Dan talks about that mute people can all of a sudden speak. It is the same power the Holy Spirit wants to come into your life and bring into your world every day for the rest of your Christian life. How have you know the Word of God is true? And God wants to put power behind every step. He wants to bring life behind every word and promise of Scripture in your life. How have you here? You want to ask God for power. You want to ask God for the Holy Spirit. If you're here and you're saying what Pastor Patrick just prayed, I want. The Holy Spirit, God, the, in the Trinity, he talks about God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. God, the Counselor who will walk me into all truth, who will walk with me every day. Jesus himself said, it is better for me, for you, that I go to heaven so I can send you the Holy Spirit. And you see, the reason Jesus is not walking on the earth today is because the Holy Spirit is moving in our midst even today. You got to plug up if you want to live a life that God has prepared for you. You got to get beyond being a dead paperweight. You got to plug up. How of you here, before we go, you want to plug up to the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe that's the reason you feel defeated. Maybe that's the reason you cannot overcome sin. Because you're not plugged up to the source of power that He has promised He wants to give you. If you're here, just bow your heads. And if you're here and you're saying, Holy Spirit, I want you in my life. I'm done moving in my own strength. I, I need the power that the, Jesus promised me I can have as a believer. If you're here and you're saying, I want to plug up. Just Holy Spirit, I want you in my life. Baptize me afresh. Can you just take a moment lift up your hands? Lift it up as if you're asking for something. You know, when you're lifting up your hands like you're a little kid and you're saying, Daddy, I want that. Daddy, I want that. Lord, your word says, if we who are evil, we, we, we give good gifts to our children. How much more you, our Heavenly Father, give us the Holy Spirit if we ask. So right now, Lord, we're lifting up our hands. You see every single one. You know their situation. You know their needs. Some of them need healing. Some of them need boldness. Some of them need power. Some of them need, just need to feel your presence in their life in a tangible way. Lord, I pray lift, as they lift up our hands, we ask. Holy Spirit, come. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Have your way. We welcome you here. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. God, you are here. There you go. Lord, even now, I just sense you pushing away. Worry. Oh, you sense that? Lord, some people walked in here with absolute burdens. And right now, I just sense a laying down of burdens. It's something they can't even comprehend. 
Lord, you are taking away their burdens right now. You're showing them. This is my yoke. Holy Spirit, just begin to yoke yourself afresh on their lives. There you go. Oh, we receive this. Just can you say this with me? Lord, I receive the Holy Spirit afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Give God a big round of applause.